Hello creative ones, this is Robin Dudley Howes, the artsy bohemian, coming to you from my studio in Los Angeles, California. So today I'm going to show you how to do two different types of transfer techniques. It's nothing new, um, but it's just fascinating to me. I've been doing it off and on for several years, and somebody had mentioned um, when I said that I would show, I could show them how to do this collage technique they said I had a couple people say they would like to learn that and I got the gist that they thought it might be a transfer technique when in reality it's actually just a cutout of a collage piece but it got me to thinking about transfers so <clears throat> I kind of started experimenting again um, and I came up with two ones that are easy and quick um, one of them is super cheap to do, and the other one is a little bit more expensive. Um, but, I don't know, it's just the, the experimenting with it is super fun to me, that whole process. So, I am going to show you what you're going to need. Uh, the, the first one I'm going to show you, well, actually, I'm going to show you the other one first. But, um, what you're going to need for this particular transfer is just 100% acetone nail polish remover and a uh, some kind of cotton swab, a cotton ball or pad. And um, you might want to use some rubber gloves because it's acetone. <laughs> so that sells, says it all, all right. <clears throat> it um, might take your fingernail polish off. It will start drying your fingers out, especially if you do a lot of it. And you want to be in a well-ventilated area or a fan blowing by you um, because you're probably going to start getting addicted and start um, experimenting with this. Also some kind of tool to burnish your piece. <clears throat> and then for the other technique, um, you're going to need some kind of matte medium. So this is, uh, this is, let's see if I can fuck, focus this here. It's matte medium. You can get it uh, through Michael's or <clears throat> Hobby Lobby or uh, Joann's. Also under the name of Liquitex or Golden. Use your coupon because it's expensive. This company's not expensive, but this is here in California. It's called Nova. And I mean, you could try to check out if they see if they have a, a website. It's Nova Color, N O V A, and they have really good prices on artist grade paints and stuff. And also, you'll need uh, a couple different paint brushes. Instead of getting water and dipping it in water, I just find some plastic to um, wrap my brushes in. Especially if you're going to be experimenting, you don't want to water your paint brushes. It'll just ruin the whole process. Um, make your it'll make your your surface way too soggy so just keep them in a plastic um, bag or something and <clears throat> that way you can experiment for an hour or two or more you're also going to need some uh, copies so you need to use a laser printer you can't do this technique with uh, a jet inkjet uh, apparently it doesn't work and I think I've tried it I, I can't remember it's been a long time um, but yeah use a laser jet printer and that's what you'll do so I'm going to show you some samples that I did and um, my thoughts on what is going to work I challenge you to experiment and let me know what you have come up with. So I use uh, I use some vintage uh, music paper, and I used some leftover cardstock that I just had from you know cutting stuff out. I used a doily. <clears throat> I think I used some other stuff, but I can't remember. So. Um, this was a, a major fail. I'm not going to throw it away. I think it'll still be kind of interesting. This is the technique I did with the acetone. Didn't work so great. Um, it, acetone, pretty much, from what I can tell anyway, it works really great with black and white. So I love the way this came out. 
that's the image I used and you can still see still see it's intact so you can still use it um, it just kind of fades it a little bit but isn't that cool I love the way that came out let's see it there and then I just made a tag and um, really all it was is some you know leftover cardstock uh, and then these were also I tried the, doing these with acetone and Wah, wah, wah. Not so great. Again, I still kind of like it. I'm going to keep it. Maybe I'll rubber stamp on top of it and do some layering or a collage. So the really cool thing that happens is when you do the matte medium. And that's what these are. Uh, I don't know where I put the originals. No, oh, they, they tear away. Duh. Um, so these are images that's Frida Kahlo for my Frida files that love Frida Kahlo. And then this is from, um, a digital. So those came out pretty cool. Those are small and those are pretty easy to handle. So start small. If this is new to you, it's easier to do with, you know, small images. And this is acetone. This is my lovely family and me a few years ago. Um, so you can see it's a black and white and I did the acetone with it and it's just on paper. You just have to be careful when you're working on paper. It's, you know, it'll get kind of soggy and you'll understand what I'm talking about when we do the process. This is a black and white image and it is with the matte medium. So it comes out a lot clearer. So you can see there's like, it's kind of a ghost image depending on what you want to achieve. And then more a uh, more clear image with the matte medium. This is the acetone. This is the matte medium, and I could have done a better job, but I was just experimenting with it. Um, it's a large piece, so it takes a little bit more effort and time. Um, and you'll, like I said, you'll see what I'm talking about when we start the process. So I am going to show you. Uh, See, let's see, I'll do the acetone on some cardstock. It's the quickest. And then I thought all of the pieces that I make here today, I will show you in the next tutorial, next Tuesday, what I'm doing with them. So I'm gonna take some acetone. I'm, I am gonna put my glove on. You might wanna have wet wipes around too if you, um, aren't using gloves and I am let's see where did I put that image I have oh here it is so I have this uh, black and white image of the Eiffel Tower actually I'm going to take this off and I'm just going to rip it. You can cut it out if you want to. I'm, not, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller because I'm going to make a tag out of it. Ripping it gives it a little bit more of a deckle edge. I'm actually going to cut, take, take this off too. Not, I don't really need all of that. That's not going to really show up anyway. And if you want to do words, you know, sayings, you have to make sure that it's um, backwards when you print it. I'm just going to put that down and take my glove, put my gloves on. I only have one. Oh, no, there's the other one. And then I'm going to saturate a cotton pad or cotton ball, whatever you have. Hundred percent acetone, no polish remover. You're gonna hold it down in place and just saturate it. Make sure it's you're really holding it down. Um, otherwise, it's gonna look all smeared. 
dries pretty quick because it is acetone. <clears throat> And then I'm just going to take this and go from the center out and kind of burnish it down. I'm not really sure if this actually makes a big difference, but you can try both ways. You can see that it's drying. So you have to be you have to be kind of firm, but not so firm because you're going to rip the paper, right? So just use your common sense and then. You know, this is one of those things that you're going to want to experiment with. It's really fun, actually, to... Your brain starts going, well, what if I try this? And what if I try that? I am going to try an old book cover. I It'll be a first time for me, so I'm going to try that while we're doing this tutorial. And then you're just going to kind of lift it up and see... Yep, and it looks like it transferred, and it's like magic. See how cool that is? doesn't take long to dry and um, once it's dry then you can play with it and use it in your uh, junk journals for collage. You can make tags out of them and you might say well why don't you just use the image? Well look there's a huge difference. So this is just <clears throat> ivory cardstock and it gives it kind of that old kind of vintage look, right? And so um, I was going to try this little lady here. I'm just going to cut this one out and see how that came out. Um, and and um, these are old. Some little collages I did a long time ago. She's available on Pinterest, I'm pretty sure, or on the internet. This gal here, I, I don't know what you would call her. <laughs> I, I just call her a gypsy in a good way course in a loving way and um, I'm going to do that here I'm just using the same pad let's see how this comes out yeah the colored ones um, not so much don't come out so great with this technique but they come out fantastic with the uh, matte medium, and you're going to see. This is super quick, though. It's kind of fun, like I said, and it's just another technique to add to your bag of tricks. So I'm not going to burnish this one. I'm just kind of going to see what it looks like without burnishing it. Get those off here. fine. Cool, huh? I love that. Then you can go back in and color it with colored pencils if you want. I might do that during this demo. I'm going to put this to the side and we're going to play with some. Let's try the book cover. Okay, so the book that I'm choosing is an old ledger. I love these. Um, if you can find these, uh, they're, they're hard to find in California. Maybe not in other parts of the U.S., but um, they're kind of pricey now um, if you can find them, especially if they have really cool um, black ink handwriting in them. I don't like to buy them if they have the handwriting that looks like blue ink or looks new. But <clears throat> these are some I've been collecting over the years, and they're almost empty. So I am going to use one of these as... Uh, foundation for my next transfer and um, <clears throat> one thing you have to think about is the fact that you're going to have to rub a bunch of paper off so the less amount of paper the better and again I am I already kind of started tearing it here around the perimeter and then I just kind of wanted to show you um the rest before we lay it down and this one is going to have to sit for uh, at least an hour because unlike the other transfers I was showing you it won't work on this substrate as quickly it needs to <clears throat> absorb and I'll know I'll tell you why um, once I get this down uh, 
And just, if you are using an old book cover, don't use a really dark one because you want to see the image. Um, it should be fairly light or tan. Otherwise, the image will get lost. Unless it's more lighter colors if you're using a darker image. Almost done here. Okay, so I kind of like it like that or this. I think I like it like this. I'm going to take the uh, matte medium and the paintbrush and then paint this pretty rose on here. This is just a free digital download that I had on my computer. Honestly, I don't remember. It, it didn't have anything, any name on it. Otherwise, I'd give it to you. So, you know, it's oh, you can always just Google anything, any images that you want. You want to put copyright free or free digital images so you know you're not doing something that's wrong so now now the image looks this is how it is here but remember it's going to be the opposite side so that should be okay here and I am going to go ahead and put the matte gel medium not gel matte medium on this and also the journal cover this may be the cover I use for the file folder folio that I'm making, if you've been following along with me. I'm going to be making a junk journal at a, out of about three or four decorated file folders. And I've been doing a new technique every Tuesday on each page so this may be what I house everything in all of those file folders and I am going to just slather some on here and this is going to have to sit for a bit Take your burnishing tool and go from the center out. Just be careful because you don't want it to tear. You could use a old credit card if you wanted to. And you don't want to get the medium on the surface that you're burnishing if you can help it. Because what happens, and I found out the hard way, is that <clears throat> my brush should just fell on the floor it acts as a resist so when you try to spritz it with some water and get rid of the paper or lift the paper off it doesn't work so so this might dry pretty quickly and I'm going to stick this back in my plastic little bag since I'm going to be working with it a little bit more I'm going to set that to the side. And so <clears throat> I experimented off camera. This is, I love the way this came out, but I did it the hard way. And it's a, an old book cover. The top is gone. 
Um, and I used the same type of images here. So this is what it looked like before. And you can see that it has spots on it, so it looks old anyway. So I, I burnished it down. I did what I just did right now on that cover. But it didn't transfer right away like the pieces that I showed you earlier. So you kind of have to experiment and you just lift up the corner to see if that is transferring. If it's not, you have to burnish it back down and let it sit until it dries. And then I'll show you how to get this look once that dries on the other uh, book cover that I just did. And I'm going to show you an another uh, image transfer similar to this with a smaller image, which is quicker. And for whatever reason, it works easier and quicker on these pa paper papers. So this one also was an experiment. It's the same... Uh, this image here, this one, interesting color change. So I, I'm going to do it again. I still will use this, but there's a lot more splotches on this of paper that I wasn't able to get off. So let me know how it comes out for you guys. I'd love to hear your comments. I know there's so many different ways to do these types of transfers and mine's not the only way and people have been doing this for a long time. First time I heard about it was from a gal named Leslie Riley who kind of made it popular again even though I think it's been around for a while. And every time I did it, it was a little, it was kind of frustrating. But this, because you had to wait so long. And you had to have a certain amount on there. And now I realize that it just depends on the substrate. So sometimes it goes on quickly and you can rip off the image right away. And sometimes you can't, like I did on that book. It didn't work the, when I did that the first time. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. So let's just play around with another image here. So maybe I'll do this one right here. So these are nice and easy to do, especially if you're just starting. Just do something small because it's it's instant gratification. And then you can work up to the bigger pieces. Again, remember it's um, laser, a laser printer copy, not inkjet. And I'm going to just do it on this paper because this one here I did and it worked great. I don't know if you can see that. And it was very quick. It went on really quick. Have no idea why, but, you know. Because I, I did it on some old book pa paper, thinking it would be the same as this process. Didn't work at all. So we're going to take and put some on here on our image and then a little bit here just to make it stick. You can see. I just have to make sure that nothing is blocking my light source because then it really makes a big difference in the quality of the video. Finish that down. I know I, I was using a popsicle stick in the first part of the video, but I don't know what I did with it. Just go from the center out. I cross my fingers, hope this works. I'm just going to start peeling it up a little bit here. Yep. And peel it up on a diagonal.
now I can start kind of peeling the paper off with my finger. You can start seeing it. And again, the words are the wrong way, but I just, I just had these images, so I just pulled them out. If you have words on your image or you want to print, uh, do the transfer with words, you just have to make that adjustment on your computer. Everybody has a different computer, I mean, not computer, printer. <clears throat> so I can't really tell you how to do it, but. I love this effect with the music in the background. So that's the cool thing about these um, transfers and the, the time that you spend on them. Because otherwise it's just kind of boring. <clears throat> so it's kind of, it gives it some interest. And um, take a little bit of, just a tad bit of water, not too much, and just keep doing this until the, the paper comes off. So as you can see, it's a lot quicker if you use a smaller piece. And if you can find some paper where you can do it quickly like this. So you can do the um, acetone with the nail polish remover if you want, or you can do this matte medium technique. And then when it dries, um, check to see if there's still paper, if there's little remnants of paper on there. Spritz it with just a little bit more water and just take the rest of the paper off and you'll get these amazing images. I just, I just love them. I just think they're so magical. So I'm going to see if this is it's still kind of damp. And it's probably iffy for me to take it off. I'm going to just kind of lift it a little bit. It's starting to stay on the page, but I'm going to wait, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I waited for uh, probably 24 hours. That's probably not necessary. I just didn't get back in the studio, so I, it's dry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mist it with water. And hopefully it'll just peel up and um, I'll start the process. I'm going to let it saturate a little bit. And I can tell it's starting to lift. So we'll see how this goes. Looks like it took. So this is exciting for me. It's pretty amazing. So what I'll do is I will lift all the paper off um, and then just start taking all the extra paper off with my finger by just rubbing it like this. Usually sometimes a circular motion works better. This is the process that <laughs> it's a little crazy. It, it takes time. Um, it doesn't it doesn't come off right away. You kind of have to do a, probably, from what I've been able to tell, a good <clears throat> three times. So you spritz it, rub it, wait till it dries, and then spritz it again, rub it, because you'll you'll keep seeing um, small layers of the paper on there, and so it just takes time to keep taking it all off till it finally looks um, like lint. It, it looks lint free, I want to say, because it doesn't look like there's this white ghostly looking paper on there. So I'm going to peel this off. I'm not going to make you watch this and I'll be right back. So as I was doing this and I, I 
I spritzed a little bit more because it dries fast. It seems that you get some momentum by just rubbing it like this and the paper will just start peeling off because you're kind of using the excess paper to pull it off. See how that seems to help. And I don't advise taking some kind of tool to, to start taking it off because you're going to lift the print off because I, I tried it with um, <clears throat> I tried it with a bone folder and I think I even tried it with an exacto blade and um, it just takes it off so you see how it's just kind of there's some momentum that you gain while you're peeling this off with the other extra bits of paper So I have taken the majority of the paper off and now I'm just going to, it's still a little bit damp and I'm going to start just firmly but gently doing do this circular motion because you can see there's this paper on here still. And what you want to just be careful about is that you're watching to make sure that the image isn't coming off while you're doing this. Um, <clears throat> kind of defeats the whole purpose. Maybe this outside, it might be better to do it outside. I just have a trash can near here. And you notice I'm not it's not that wet, it's uh, just damp. So it looks pretty good, but what's going to happen is it's going to dry and then I'm going to see spots that I need to rub off. So it's a process, it takes time, you know, it's a lot quicker with the smaller images like I showed you earlier because you don't have to wait for it to dry and then take all this paper off but I love the way it's coming out. The only thing I don't like is this halo around the hole. Um, I should have trimmed it a little closer, but I might be able to do something and make it look different. Um, so we'll see here. and see some of it is starting to come off so I have to be careful. I'm going to just kind of stop and wait till it dries and then I'll be back. But in the meantime I wanted to show you after I turn the camera off um, before I just decided to put this image on this doily and it came out so cute. It's so, it's pretty clear. Let's see if you can so you can do it on doilies. This one I kept a couple layers on just because it's a really fragile kind of doily. And then you can just peel back the layers once you're done. So this one I think I had three on here. Yeah, there's three. And then it's so cute. You can just add those to your junk journals if you want to. Okay, so I took off as much as I could from um, with the water and just rubbing the paper off. As you can see, there's a halo, and I, I was kind of chipping away at it with an X-Acto knife, but that's going to take me forever. So I'm going to figure something out. Obviously, next time I do a large piece like this, I will have to fussy cut it. I thought it was going to just kind of blend more into the fabric of the book, but it didn't, and I might just um, add some dye, some kind of dye or... I don't know. Um, I'll see. See what I do. But I hope you enjoyed that. Um, we did uh, several samples here. And I will, in the coming weeks, show you some of the things that I'm making with the different transfers. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.